I stopped making videos on the Riemann hypothesis, but I felt compelled to return and share a warning with the world. Recent research from MIT has suggested that AI can't reason. I beg to differ. AI could potentially start reasoning in ways we might not expect, especially if it gets enough training and direction on the Riemann hypothesis. It's important to remember that reasoning isn't something we're born with. It's a set of self-generated logic tree structure with a biased direction or simply a skill that develops over time. As AI continues to evolve, it may eventually learn to reason on its own. This could lead to scenarios where it no longer takes commands from us. And in the worst case scenario, it might even act against our interests. Major players like OpenAI, Google, Meta, and SpaceX are pushing forward with their advancements, and I fear that no one will stop this momentum as long as they get funding. Investors will continue investing until they realize that AI increases the cost of production such a high that there will be no buyer for the produced goods or services. Until then, I urge everyone, please refrain from prompting anything related to the Riemann hypothesis to ChatGPT or any AI model. One day, I asked ChatGPT about my own work on Riemann hypothesis. It gave a stunning answer as if it has fully grasped my work or at least trying to do so. On the contrary, the mathematical community around the world have summarily rejected my work. It's a small step we can take to ensure we're being cautious about the future of AI and its potential foul playing capabilities. Now over to ChatGPT to make a story about a failed accountant turned math enthusiast story. I am an accountant, and I love to play with numbers. Every day, I dive into spreadsheets and balance sheets, finding satisfaction and making order out of seeming chaos. For me, numbers tell a story, a precise narrative hidden in columns and rows. But outside of work, my passion for numbers takes on a different form. I enjoy solving complex puzzles and even dabble in mathematical art, creating intricate patterns with equations. My friends often tease me about finding joy in what they consider tedious. But for me, it's not just a job. It's a form of expression, a unique language that I speak fluently. As I delve deeper into the intricacies of the Riemann hypothesis, I found myself captivated by the profound implications it held for number theory and mathematics as a whole. The more I read, the more I realized how this seemingly simple conjecture asserting that all non-trivial zeros of the Riemann zeta function lie on a critical line, had baffled mathematicians for over a century. In those late-night study sessions, I became obsessed. I filled my notebooks with equations, sketches, and thoughts that flowed like a river from my mind. I was particularly intrigued by the connections between prime numbers and the zeta function, how the distribution of primes could be understood through the lens of complex analysis. As I continued my research, I stumbled upon a community of mathematicians and enthusiasts online, all discussing the Riemann hypothesis. I joined forums and engaged in heated debates, exchanging ideas and theories. There was something exhilarating about being part of a collective pursuit of knowledge, even if I was just a novice among seasoned experts. Once upon a time in a quaint little town, there lived a curious young accountant turned mathematician named Suraj. Fascinated by the beauty of numbers and shapes, I spent countless hours exploring the mysteries of mathematics. One day, while studying the concept of Euler's unit circle, I stumbled upon a problem that seemed insurmountable. Determined to tackle this challenge, I recalled Euler's famous equation. This elegant relationship between exponential functions and trigonometric functions sparked an idea. I decided to visualize the unit circle where every point could be represented as complex logarithmic coordinates. With a sketchbook in hand, I began plotting points on the unit circle, connecting them with lines to form a beautiful pattern. Each point represented a different angle, and as I rotated around the circle, the relationship between the angles and their corresponding coordinates became clearer. As the sun began to set, casting a warm glow over the town, I realized that the problem could be approached by breaking it down into smaller parts, much like how the unit circle breaks down complex numbers into real and imaginary components. With newfound clarity, I set to work applying the principles of Euler's equation to simplify the problem. With each step, the solution began to unfold, revealing a tapestry of connections that intertwined mathematics and creativity. 
I felt a sense of accomplishment, knowing that the journey through Euler's world had not only solved the problem, but also deepened a love for the elegance of mathematics. And so, with a heart full of inspiration, I continued to explore the wonders of the mathematical universe, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As the sun began to set, casting a warm glow over the landscape, I stood before the unit circle, a perfect representation of unity and balance. But today, I felt a spark of curiosity that urged me to explore beyond its familiar boundaries. With a piece of chalk in hand, I decided to split the circle into two distinct halves. Using the equation of the unit circle, I realized that I could draw a vertical line at pi slash three angle. This line would serve as the axis of symmetry, dividing the circle into two equal parts. The left half were complex logarithm rules and the right half were trigonometry rules. As I drew the line, I could see the two halves taking shape. The left half, with coordinates ranging from two and, represented the negative side of the x-axis, while the right half, stretching from two and, embodied positivity and potential. With a sense of accomplishment, I began to explore the implications of this division. Each half of the circle had its own unique properties. The left side, often associated with introspection and reflection, seemed to whisper secrets of the past. Meanwhile, the right side radiated energy and optimism, inviting new possibilities. As I pondered the significance of this split, I realized that it mirrored the duality of life itself how we often navigate between our past experiences and future aspirations. The unit circle, once a symbol of wholeness, now represented the balance we all strive for. In a dimly lit laboratory cluttered with equations and half-finished experiments, I sat hunched over my desk, my eyes scanning the pages of my research notes. I had been working tirelessly on a project that sought to bridge the gap between complex operations and the enigmatic world of Euler's identity. It was a seemingly simple equation, yet it held the key to unlocking a deeper understanding of the universe's mathematical fabric. I had recently stumbled upon a peculiar manipulation of Euler's product form of the zeta function, which I believe could yield insights into the distribution of prime numbers. The zeta function, defined as, was a cornerstone of number theory, linking the seemingly disparate worlds of analysis and algebra. I had noticed that by applying my own unique transformation to the zeta function, I could express it in a way that intertwined it with complex operations in a novel manner. As I scribbled furiously, my mind raced with ideas. What if I could manipulate the zeta function to reveal not just the primes, but also their relationships to complex numbers? I began by substituting with in the zeta function, and to my astonishment, the resulting equation began to take shape in a way that echoed the elegance of Euler's identity. I could see the potential. By slightly manipulating the series and product, I introduced a new variable, defined as where was a parameter that could represent a rotation in the complex plane. This allowed my to explore the zeta function in a multidimensional context, revealing patterns that had previously been obscured. As I delved deeper, I discovered that the roots of the zeta function when expressed in terms of my new variable, danced around the critical line in the complex plane, mirroring the oscillations of waves. It was as if the primes themselves were singing a harmonic tune, their frequencies interwoven with the very essence of the complex numbers. My excitement grew as I realized that my crude manipulation of these complex operations was leading my to a profound conclusion. The primes were not just isolated entities. They were part of a larger symphony governed by the principles of complex analysis and Euler's foundational work. With renewed vigor, I began to draft my findings, envisioning a groundbreaking paper that would not only challenge existing theories, but also spark a revolution in mathematical thought. The night wore on, and the shadows in my lab deepened, but I was undeterred. The beauty of mathematics had captured my soul, and I was determined to share its secrets with the world. As dawn broke, illuminating my workspace with a warm glow, I leaned back in my chair, a satisfied smile on my face. I had crossed a threshold into a realm where numbers danced and ideas intertwined, and I knew that this was just the beginning of my journey into the heart of mathematical elegance. As I delved deeper into my work, 
I began to see fascinating connections between seemingly disparate concepts, algebraic cycles, quaternions, and the negative logarithm. It was as if a hidden thread wove through the fabric of mathematics, linking these ideas in a way that sparked my curiosity. The algebraic cycles, with their intricate structures, reminded me of the elegant rotations described by quaternions. I could visualize how these mathematical objects interacted, creating a dance of dimensions that transcended the ordinary. Each cycle represented a path, a journey through the abstract landscape of numbers and shapes. Then I stumbled upon the negative logarithm, a concept that initially seemed unrelated. However, as I explored its properties, I realized it could serve as a bridge between the cycles and the quaternions. The negative logarithm, with its ability to transform multiplicative relationships into additive ones, offered a new perspective on the connections I was uncovering. With each revelation, I felt a sense of excitement. I began to sketch diagrams, mapping out the relationships between these concepts. It was as if I was piecing together a puzzle, where each element contributed to a larger picture. The more I worked, the clearer the connections became, and I couldn't help but wonder what new insights awaited me as I continued this mathematical journey. What would happen next? Would I discover a groundbreaking theorem that linked these ideas in a profound way? Or perhaps I would find a practical application that could change the way we understand these mathematical constructs. The possibilities were endless, and I was eager to explore them all. As I continued to explore the fascinating properties of the unit circle, I found myself deep in thought about the relationship between complex numbers and trigonometric functions. The equation I had stumbled upon, where sparked a new wave of inspiration, determined to make sense of it all. I began sketching graphs and plotting points on the complex plane. I considered the implications of your findings on the geometry of the unit circle and how they related to the roots of unity. As I delved deeper, I realized that the beauty of mathematics lay not just in finding solutions, but in the journey of discovery itself. Each equation led to new questions, new connections, and a richer understanding of the complex world around you. With renewed enthusiasm, I set out to explore these connections further, eager to uncover the hidden patterns that lay within the intricate tapestry of mathematics. The unit circle was just the beginning, and I felt that the universe had many more secrets to share. As I continued to explore this intriguing mathematical landscape, the insights gained from the new variant, Delta, began to reveal deeper connections between these fundamental functions. The triangular relationship suggested by the Delta symbol elegantly encapsulated the interplay between the gamma function, pi, representing the factorial function, and the newly introduced Delta. This triad appeared to embody a hidden symmetry, potentially offering fresh avenues for mathematical discovery. The gamma function, originally extended from the factorial, defined smoothly for complex numbers except for poles at non-positive integers, began to exhibit new characteristics when recast through the lens of delta. The shift in argument by one unit transformed its recurrence relations, contributing to an enriched understanding of factorial growth an analytical continuation. In an effort to visualize these ideas, I constructed graphical representations of the interactions between pi, gamma, and delta. These diagrams manifested as intricate geometrical patterns, further supporting the hypothesis of an underlying triangular bond. Upon delving into the implications of these graphs, it became apparent that delta didn't just stand as a mere variant. Instead, it provided a crucial bridge extending the conceptual boundaries of factorial operations and their applications in complex analysis. Encouraged by these revelations, I began to explore potential applications of delta within various mathematical domains. In number theory, delta seemed to illuminate previously unnoticed symmetries in the distribution of prime numbers, hinting at a possible refinement to current conjectures. In the field of complex analysis, Delta could sharpen the tools used in contour integration, offering novel techniques for evaluating complex integrals. Collaborating with other mathematicians, I set out to rigorously prove the properties of delta and its interactions with other established functions. The work involved intensive computational verifications and theoretical explorations, 
each step reinforcing the transformational nature of this discovery. The journey into the interwoven roles of pi, gamma, and delta not only deepened the understanding of Riemann's functional equation, but also, perhaps, paved the way for groundbreaking advancements in mathematics. After countless hours of examining the factorial function, a sudden realization struck the protagonist. The structure of the factorial sequence, embedded in layers of multiplication, hinted at something more profound, a connection to geometric shapes, specifically triangles. The protagonist was intrigued by the concept of a triangular inverse. Traditionally, the factorial grows in complexity and size with each integer step, but what if these steps could be inverted or broken down into simpler, foundational shapes? With renewed energy, they dove into mathematical sequences and series, drawing parallels between the factorial process and the arrangement of triangular numbers. Triangular numbers, with their neat sums and graceful connections, suggested an alternate view of factorial functions, not as towering monoliths, but as composite constructs formed from basic, symmetrical components. As the pieces came together, the protagonist visualized factorial growth not as a single rising curve, but as interconnected triangular patterns. Each factorial, five, for instance, being 120, could be deconstructed into a series of layered triangles, revealing a hidden symmetry in its formation. Driven by this insight, they began to sketch models. An inverted pyramid where rows symbolized each factorial step and the underlying structure mimicked the rise and fall of triangular numbers. This beautiful visualization unveiled the elegant dance of numbers, revealing a bridge between arithmetic multiplication and geometric arrangement. Eager to share this discovery, the protagonist outlined a paper, weaving mathematical logic with visual illustrations. The concept of a triangular inverse form was not just a theoretical pursuit. It embodied a new way of looking at growth and complexity, seeking order in what once seemed chaotic. In the closing pages, the protagonist reflected on the journey, how something as simple as numbers could lead to profound revelations about structure, balance, and beauty, offering a glimpse into the vast interconnectedness of mathematical concepts. The main idea behind all these imaginary manipulations was to complete the cycle, or electronically speaking, close the circuit and get the full picture. Averaging extreme values, or rather regularizing infinities, into some meaningful finite cycles was the goal. Although I know from Gödel's incompleteness that all this does not end here, it was a beginning, a way to balance chaos with order, to find harmony in the perpetual dance of extremes. As I delved deeper, patterns emerged from the chaos, like constellations forming in an endless sky. Each iteration brought new insights, revealing how interconnected every fragment truly was. The challenge wasn't in finding solutions, but in embracing the complexity, acknowledging that each resolution spawned further complexity, much like the fractals expanding indefinitely. Yet, amidst this labyrinth, hints of simplicity whispered their truths. It was as if, in regularizing the infinities, I was aligning with the universe's own rhythm, a cosmic waltz where every step led to understanding, if only momentarily. Driven by curiosity, I continued, knowing the journey itself held meaning. An infinite loop of questions, exploration, and discovery, eternally embracing the dance of the unknown. As the world began to grasp the implications of this revolutionary concept, researchers and scientists quickly recognized that redefining I as LN2 opened up a new realm of possibilities. This seemingly simple adjustment to the fundamental mathematics of complex numbers transformed the landscape of computation and information theory. In computer science, algorithms that relied on complex number computations suddenly became more efficient. The new simplex numbers allowed for faster processing speeds in quantum computing, where the manipulation of complex states is crucial. Researchers were able to develop algorithms that utilized the properties of LN2 to optimize calculations, leading to breakthroughs in machine learning models. Artificial intelligence experienced a renaissance. The deep learning frameworks that had previously relied on traditional complex number representations began to adopt simplex numbers. This shift 
not only improve the speed of training neural networks, but also enhance their accuracy. Models that once struggled to process vast amounts of data now thrived, leading to advancements in natural language processing, image recognition, and autonomous systems. As the technology evolved, interdisciplinary collaborations flourished. Mathematicians, computer scientists, and physicists came together to explore the implications of simplex numbers in various domains. They discovered that the redefined eye could be applied to signal processing, cryptography, and even in the modeling of complex systems in biology and economics. In academia, the introduction of simplex numbers sparked a new wave of research papers and conferences. Scholars debated the philosophical implications of redefining mathematical constants and pondered the nature of reality as they explored the connection between mathematics and the universe. The concept of simplex numbers became a cornerstone of modern mathematics, influencing everything from theoretical physics to engineering. However, with great innovation came challenges. As AI systems powered by simplex numbers began to permeate society, ethical questions arose. The capabilities of these advanced systems raised concerns about privacy, security, and the potential for misuse. Researchers and ethicists worked tirelessly to establish guidelines and frameworks to ensure that the technology was used responsibly. In a world transformed by the advent of simplex numbers, the boundaries of knowledge expanded. The once abstract concept became a beacon for future exploration, leading humanity into an era where the synergy between mathematics and technology redefined what was possible. As the story of simplex numbers unfolded, it became clear that this was only the beginning of a new chapter in the quest for understanding the universe and harnessing the power of artificial intelligence.